so much for joining us on another interesting edition of our current affairs program, Issues of the Moment. This program is coming to you live from the studio of Living Television Film Academy here in Aba, the commercial capital of Southeast Nigeria. And on today's edition of our program, we are going to discuss strike and its implication on Nigeria's economy, which is touted as Africa's biggest economy. Strike, which is usually a measure of last resort when collective bargaining fails, has become a common phenomenon in Nigeria. There is hardly any more that passes without some industrial union and pattern of strike at the federal or state levels. As we speak, the National Association of Resident Doctors have, has down tools. All the unions that embark on strike have one thing in common. They are always demanded for better pay or conducive working environment. The unions also demand, the unions also demand for better working environment. And uh, it has been observed that the federal government always fell to uh, honor the agreement in reach with the unions, and that is why they also embark on strike. And on this very edition of our program, we are honored to have two gentlemen who are going to talk about this very important issue. Sitting on my right is a former state lawmaker, former deputy speaker at the State House of Assembly, and former commissioner, trade and investment at the state. I'm talking about Right Honorable Cosmos in the Welcome to the program. Thank you, the moderator. I also have in the studio this morning a human rights activist. He is a lawyer. He is also vice chairman of our branch of the Nigerian Bar Association MBA. He is Victor Omremadu. Mr. Omremadu, thanks for joining us on issues of the moment. Uh, let me start with uh, Mr. Omre Majo. Uh, why is it that uh, the federal or state government is always in a hurry to enter into agreement with uh, trade unions, but uh, they hesitate to honor these agreements? And that is the main reason why many industrial unions embark on strike. Uh, okay. Thank you for answering, answering, uh, asking me this question. I must begin by saying that. Uh, First of all, let us consider the sincerity of purpose. What is the reason of this um, menace or strike? Why are the workers always embarking on strike? It is when you find out these reasons, you can now know why the federal government or the government are very in a hurry to enter in agreement with them, and then later they will decline. These, the workers, Always goes on strike because of a better condition of uh, working, uh, a better condition of, of, uh, of uh, their, their, their work. I mean, especially in respect to salaries being paid to them. So they have union to protect the workers' interest. You see, before the workers strike or the, the back of this, their strike, the union it is the from the leadership of the union that will now mandate each uh, particular union, uh, worker. We are saying, let, 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 for example, the medical association. Or the teachers, uh, the, 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 the teacher, the teachers, or they are about to embark on strike. It is their leadership, the leadership of the union, that always give that mandate. It is before that time, the federal government must have known, or the state government, that, that this is the problem. This is before the. It, it is not something they just woke up one day and say we are going on strike. There must have been no negotiation. There must have been this arbitrary. Or to, or to the federal government, to the state government, look at we have not been paid, and they continue to, de to delay and play the late night case and all that. And then when they go on strike, when they want to go on the strike, then the strike federal government or they will, will enter into agreement that they, and they will not honor that agreement. The reason is that the federal government is sincere. They have remained this sincere. And is that the sincerity of purpose that has been causing this issue of the state government or the federal government um, um, uh, um, enter into agreement which they will not honor? Secondly, it is the issue of embezzlement. The issue of Trying uh, uh, corruption. Let me. That is the that, 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 that is the language. Corruption on the state on the on the part of the government. The government are so corrupt that every money, the money that's supposed to accrue to the workers, doesn't even. It's not, in fact, if, if you give the, the the government, the state government, or the federal government, the whole money in the world will not be enough because of the type of uh, 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 activities they engage on. They don't they, they don't care about the welfare of their workers. And that is the reason why, when it is a government, maybe they will bring the, the commissioner, is either a commissioner or the minister who is in charge of labor, or they are trying to bring him to as a sacrificial lamb to go and negotiate with the workers. They work, they, either the commissioner is 
propose on the federal government is, is, is not there. And that's the reason why each time they enter, they hurriedly enter into the agreement, into agreement which they know they will not fulfill. And let me say before I... I, I, I think we'll add. I don't worry, you have made your point. Thank you so much. And uh, before we, uh, we proceed, I want to announce that we have students of uh, Living TV Film Academy who are part of this very program. As we proceed, we are going to give them an opportunity to ask questions or contribute to the issue we are discussing. Right on, Reverend Duper, you had it very well. You are a politician. He cited the issue of corruption. Are you on the same page with him? Well, um Thank you, the moderator. You see, the word corruption is a relative term. It depends on application, where you are applying the corruption. Corruption on this issue, to me, I believe that if we start digressing to it or dissecting this issue of uh, use of strikes, some workers use strikes to data their service, as they said, payment of salaries that are not being paid. But you now look at their leaders also, the labor leaders. Some of them inside these strikes. So if it's a strike being incited by the labor leaders for a, their own purpose, to fulfill their own personal political purpose, there is politics everywhere. It's not only for the elected office holders or the appointed uh, office holders in the political cycle that are playing politics. Sometimes these labor leaders will play politics. They will accept strike at the back and call on strike. And tomorrow you say federal government is a sincere state, is a sincere. What happens to those who were being bribed, intimidated, or coerced to drop the, the strike? Strike is being made by a, a, a weapon tool used by employees to attract the attention of an employer in a given situation that is ugly and they want to readdress it. But you look at Nigerian strike. These days, the labor unions will just incite it. They will go at the back and negotiate. They will be settled. They will call off the strike. Some of them are being intimidated. They will call off the strike. Some of them are being bribed. Some of them are being given juicy positions. Some of them are even being appointed. We have seen cases of labor leaders who are now become governors, or ex governors. They started by harassing the whole Nigerians that they are sincere in the issue of using strike. They ended up being a selfish uh, kind of tool used to better their own person. They talk tough in the morning and go to the back at night and be settled. So in that case scenario, you will not say the federal government is not sincere. The people that are initiating this strike, are they sincere? Have they pushed it to a logical conclusion? Have they ever pushed this strike to a logical conclusion? You just look at it. They will start it today. The next week they will call them. The leaders will be settled. And then they will drop this strike. Tomorrow the same thing will continue. It continue becoming a recurring decimal. It's like a vicious cycle. Yes. They are just using it for the political tool for self aggrandizement being gotten from this guy. It's not only uh, applied to the political sector, elected political sector only. What of the leaders? There are still more politicians than the politicians themselves. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Nigeria is uh, Africa's uh, largest democracy and also is among uh, one of the costliest in the world. Don't you think that uh, if we cut out the cost of governance in Nigeria, industrial action uh, can be reduced to the barest minimum? Yes, I, I, I'm coming to that point also. Right? Maybe I was thinking when you asked that question, the cost of governance in Nigeria is too high. I am one of the apostles of opinion that we should reduce the cost of governance. And that is why you see a governor who will be in the office or a minister or the president will go into office and say they have not yet to pay salaries. He will want to better his constituents, he will want to give them stomach infrastructure, he will want to better his immediate family, he will want to better his immediate constituency, he will want to better his clan, he will want to better his, um, uh, his uh, area of coverage within the period and also fulfill some of the political promises we make. Some of these white elephant promises, white lies that we tell the constituents where we are conversing for this. Then you will not look at the fund that the is in. The economy of Nigeria is going there. The funds are not there. Even when the funds were there, they were using it for jamboree. They are not as it used to be. So you look at what you have. Then you say, okay, let me cut him into the withhold this month salary. And when he withholds it, withhold the second month, and nobody is talking, 
the labor leaders are those he appointed by himself. Influenced into that same office, they are not talking because all of them are having some three different. How can the system work? So, what the cost of governance and the insincerity of the labor leader? These are the people I'm hammering so much. Is the major reasons why we are having reoccurring strife in Nigeria. And until we address this issue, whereby the labor leader is being selected by the by the workforce, the labor the labor workforce itself, and not by Mayor Kangaroo appointment, you see the president influencing somebody from his village to be the, 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 the labor union or the labor chairman for the whole Nigeria. What do you expect? Some of these things are discussed. Okay. Some of these strikes are being discussed. Okay. I thank you very much for that uh, wonderful information. Now, um, Mr. Nwemadu, I know that uh, a worker is entitled to his uh, wage at the end of every month. Now, is it a valid excuse for a worker to go and strike for the non-payment of uh, his or her salary? <laughs> is it a valid excuse uh, when you consider that uh, strike should be a measure of last resort? Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I thank you so much for asking this question. I thank you so much for bringing honorable Muslims to this program. I thank you so much. Because I know he's an entrepreneur. And he had uh, people that are working on that. And I know that I've never gone to that where he and see the workers. Uh, before trying. you go ahead, I'm uh, coming, I'm coming. Before you go ahead, uh, on the good is not a trial. He's no, here. I know, I know. Yeah, don't worry, he's making a valid point. He's making a valid point. I'm not going to go to the city, but I want to go to the city, but I want to go to the city, and see the workers. Yes. They always get yes. their work. So, and because it is, it is a personal enterprise, it is not a collective, it's not a government. Uh, but when government, excuse me, I'm coming, I want to come to that. When it becomes the issue of in Igbo language, they say that the a goat that is owned by the general court is always that of Honda. When the government takes over a, a governance of other state or, or the, the federal government, they look at it as they are not responsible to the people. They believe they have got to, 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 to grab their own nation like cake. And let me tell you, okay, for example, let me use other states, for example. You, I heard that the workers, the, 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 the doctors have not been paid for 20 months. Sometime ago, the whole federal government went on strike, the judiciary went on strike. And they went on strike for almost two months. We lawyers, we, we are doing absolutely doing nothing. And the federal government, because of the autonomy or whatever, and the federal government came in, in and tried to have a, a dialogue with them, with them. And before you go down to now, nothing has happened. They have come back. Now, let me tell you the only legal tool that the workers have is strike. That is the only thing they can do. What other what, 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 what thing they are expecting them to do? And let me give an example. No governor, no governor, no president, no past governor, no past president that is not receiving his even, that didn't even pay pensions and salaries. Today, the news came out that the uh, governor, the, 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 the uh, Lagos governor, Lagos, Lagos has, has slashed the salaries of the former governors to 50%. They have slashed it. Today's news, I have it today. The Jumbo, Jumbo salary, they are being paid. A governor will be in office, he will leave office, he will go to the Senate, he does not, he does not retire, and he continues to pay him pension. This is why will not pay, you will, will not pay workers who are working 35 years in such a they have to work, you will not pay them, and they are giving a school. But they are paying somebody who, has, who was in office, who has signed the, the state cost for me, who has, who, 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 who has, you know, embezzled from. And even if he was not here, he, he, and then he's in the Senate receiving salary, and they are paying him uh, what they call it, pension. And he want workers to go hungry every month, and you think it is right. It is not. What is the budget of, uh, 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 of, the, of the federal government by a day for feeding? Sometimes we will start at 3 million by a day for feeding. You pay somebody by a day for feeding, teaching this and 3 million, and you are, you are not going to pay a worker. Who is, how much is a worker? 30,000. Let me tell you, how much can 30,000 naira buy? A bag of rice. And you will not pay him at the end of the month. And you want him to stay for months and you will not go, he will continue to work. And let me tell you, do you know why when my Honorable uh, 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 was talking about the labor leaders going to negotiate and coming back? See, see, there is this Stalin. Stalin was the president of the Russian Empire. His, work, his, his people came around, they were making noise. He said, who made that noise there? Who made that noise there? Everybody kept quiet. Nobody wanted to talk. They were saying, who said that thing? And everybody kept quiet. That's their fear. The United 
trying to possess something. He picked a cow, a, 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 a chicken. That chicken, he, he, he tried to pull out all the feathers of that chicken, and the chicken, the chicken became naked, and, he, and the chicken was flowing with blood. That's a fowl. And he started throwing corn to that fowl, and going at the cow, and the, and the, and the fowl was following him. That is what the Nigerian government do to, do to their workers. Okay. When you strip a worker naked, he has nothing to eat. The child, the children, the children have nothing to eat. They are being stuck in school. The, the child is sick and is in the hospital. He's looking for 5,000, 3,000 people and deposit in the hospital. Bill. And you're not going to that. And the next one, they come back, come and walk, let's receive the you have body for 20 months. I receive two months on letters. You will come just begging me to receive this so that they can go to hospital and at least pay for that child that is dying in the hospital. Okay, thank you for the money. I think you have made uh, your point. At this point, we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, issues of the moment will continue. Canon. 
and also there is this law called retributive uh, justice. Of justice. Whatever you do to harm the society, to harm human beings, waits at the corner. Life must pay you back in one way or the other. It is uh, 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 they always shunt it. The laws are there. They are supposed to guide both the federal government, the state, and so on. Strike is supposed to be the last resort of the common man, of the common laborer, of the common workers. Strike started during the industrial revolution era. Workers used it to press their points home, and they got it from government. But these days, like the judiciary when they were on strike for two months, we have someone who is fending ignorance as if he doesn't even know that the judiciary is on strike. Families were put into hunger. If a lawyer don't go to court, how will he be able to feed his family? He will not. How will he be able to feed his family? How will he be able to do the, the work of the society? So many people who are in uh, uh, prison as a result of detention, you know, awaiting trial, they all suffered within those two months. So hopes lost their beloved ones. Now the resident doctors have joined. Who knows when this one will end? The ones the lawyers pressed home have it been solved. No. Promises were made and they have all been recalled. Tomorrow they may still press for the same autonomy. This autonomy, the federal government will tell you they have agreed to it, they have signed it into law. The state will say, well, it's a common fund, it comes into the state, we need to distribute the money in line with what we get and the areas that needed the money more. So two wrongs can never make a right. We need to press home the issue of sincerity of purpose. Both those who are going for the strike and the ones who are negotiating for the strike. And then um, we look at the way our nation is. Strike now to me has been politicized. Deeply. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. There's a lot of politics going on with strike. Okay, thank so you. So no amount of legality that you present that they will not shut it. They will bring another angle that will make it look justifiable. Whereas there is something behind it that they are hiding from you. Okay. Government. Thank you very much. Any other uh, question? Introduce yourself and uh, then you can go ahead and ask your question.
institution. Strong institution. And, and another thing, strong institution. And that is strong in that institution includes one of the most pillars is the rule of law. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we don't have strong institution. Rather, we have strong personalities. And when you have strong personalities, the country is in trouble. Because institution is supposed to checkmate strong personalities. If you have strong institution, anybody that goes to the government is subject to that institution. But unfortunately in Nigeria, the institution can be made away with and the person comes at a, a despotic, as a tyrant, a tyrant, a dictator, and controls as institution in Nigeria. And that's the difference thing between here and civilized world. Civilized world will have strong institutions. When you go there, if you cannot match the institution, the institution will get you out. And another person will come in. But in Nigeria, you go there, you go to the institution, and you become the status quo. You become the alpha and the omega. And that is the problem. And when you become the alpha and the omega, corrupt, the power corrupts and corrupts absolutely. The person will get corrupt because they all the power is in his hand. Either the governor or the president, they, they, they all the whole power is in his hand. And he gets corrupted. If you are telling him anything, he doesn't look at you. So, strong institution. If we must succeed, if there must be, if the strike must, must stop, if, any, if corruption must stop, we must have strong institution. Take China, for example. Take America, for example. Take any civilized world. Even, even, even Rwanda, even Ghana. They are beginning to be the institution. Whereby, if you commit any offense, and the institution will check back to you and remove you. In Nigeria, can you impeach the president? The answer is no. Can you even impeach a governor without the input of the president in Nigeria? The answer is no. So, the, 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 the heart of the assembly people cannot do anything. The governor controls even the heart of assembly. The president controls the Senate and the heart of press. They tell you how it will work. The judiciary are being intimidated. The judges are being arrested in the midnight and tried. But tell you how they will be bold to hand over judgment against the government. So, the institutions are very weak. Very, very weak. We just think that Nigeria, if nothing is done, we all of us are done. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now, in the course of uh, this very discussion, he said that governors, they are in charge of the House of Assembly. And I know too well that you were once the former deputy speaker of the House. How truth? How truthful is this? Well, it depends on what the legal uh, uh, office for me, by governors being in charge of the House of Assembly. Because I know when I was in the House of Assembly, I was elected by uh, my constituents, and I represented them very broadly. Depending on what he means by being in charge, is it by uh, well, well of uh, waving the political uh, uh, opinion of the house, or directing the house on what to do, or maybe financial, or financial. So you see, there is a point we made. If we can strengthen our institutions and let them stand on their feet, which we have started by way well of. Autonomy. autonomy of the judiciary, autonomy of the legislators. Financial autonomy, not just autonomy by word of mouth. Autonomy of allowing their finances to come to them and let them use their own hands to manage their finances. Autonomy of even the local government. If we have all these autonomies fully institutionalized in the whole that systems of the federation and FCT inclusive, then we now start from there to drive this strong institution coming up to be. And who are those supposed to do this? Our youths. We all know that the way things are is not right. But where are youths who want to protest they only go for answers and end this and end that? Why can't they talk about institutions that are weak? How do we strengthen it? How do we come to strengthen it? The governors can only control the houses of assembly if they want to. You can see some states where the houses of assemblies are not being controlled by the government. I know of many states that the houses of assemblies are not being controlled by the government. And I know of many states that the houses of assembly are being controlled by the government. But if you tell me that the houses of assembly, the one I attended, that we have good relationship with the government, we did. We were not fighting, we didn't fight each other. But that, the government did not stop us from one day from making any law. It did not stop us from one day from passing any law, any bill. There are some bills we passed. He withdraws assets. And we we'll wait for it sometime. If it comes back to us, we'll use an authority to veto it. So I, I don't see any rank between the State House of Assembly when I was there and uh, that of the governor. If to fight the governor, the State House of Assembly to fight the governor is what he means by controlling the houses. I'll say, 
Let the people bring those bills they want off. Let the lawyer fashion those bills they want the house to pass. And see whether the house will not pass it. But the authority of this nation resides on the executive that have uh, immunity, like the president and the government. If you can only mention God, the mess in power is there. So because of that, a normal city of power will get to death. It's difficult. You can make that law, even the National Assembly can even make that law, pass it and give it to the president. He will not add any asset to it. Okay. And that, and that it. Okay, thank you very much. I'm right so the duties of the house is to make law. Okay. We are not there to fight the governors. Thank you very much. I think you have made a, a very valuable contribution. And with that, you have come to the end of uh, today's edition of our program, Issues of the Moment. We have been discussing strike and its implications on Nigeria's economy. I want to thank uh, the Vice Chairman of uh, Aba Branch of the MPA, Mr. Victor Oremado, for being part of today's edition. God bless you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank the Right Honorable Cosmos Ndube, former Deputy Speaker of Abia State House of Assembly. Thank you for coming to Issues of the Moment. Thank you, God bless you. And also the students, I want to thank you for participating. My name is Jim Ezeer Thank you for watching.